Starting off this countdown, we have a new life. Back in 1970, Dorothy and John Peckham were on a holiday cruise and were in Hawaii at the time. To pass time and have some banter, they started writing notes and putting them in empty champagne bottles with a dollar as well and just throwing them into the Pacific. They kind of forgot about the entire thing until they got a response four years later. 13 years later, an ex Vietnamese soldier named Hoa Van Nugent found one of the bottles with his brother. The bottle was located off the coast of Thailand. Well, turns out that the brothers were trying to escape their miserable living conditions and set out on a raft. When they reached shore, they bought a stamp using the dollar in the bottle and mailed a letter back to the couple who sent the message. In the letter, they asked the Peckhams if they were able to help them leave Vietnam and relocate and start a new life in the US. Dorothy and John were like, oh hell yeah, and did everything they could to make the immigration happen, and two years later, the Nguyen's moved to the US. Okay guys, let us know, is it Nguyen's or, or Nugent's? We don't know. I know someone named Nugent with the last name Nugent. And I know someone with the last name Nguyen, so we really don't know. You know what I mean? Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after. I just find it amazing how the couple sent out the message yeah. as a joke, yet it actually helped save someone's life. Can you imagine, like, just a message in the bottle, like, oh, on a cruise, whoop. <laughs> Never would have thought. Coming in at number nine is the castaway. The year was 1794, and the ocean was very rough due to extremely stormy conditions. Chunosuke Matsuyama, a Japanese seaman, had unfortunately chosen to travel a few days beforehand with 43 other companions. They were all on a mission to find some buried treasure, and treasure they did not find, but a storm they definitely did. The crew became shipwrecked on an island in the South Pacific with zero supplies and no forms of communication. The crew survived on crabs for a while before dying one by one, so Matsuyama decided to leave a message before he died as well. He carved a story about their misfortune into coconut wood and put it into a bottle and let it wash into the sea. No one had any idea what became of the group until the bottle was found 151 years later in 1935. A Japanese seaweed collector found it washed ashore in the village of Hiraturimura. In our 8th spot, we had the message from the Titanic. The sinking of the Titanic was a terrible tragedy. Over 1,500 people lost their lives with only 705 survivors. For those that lost their lives on the ship, it's sad that they didn't get to say their final goodbyes to the world. But one man did. While the ship was sinking, a young Irishman named Jeremiah Burke decided to write a message and conceal it in a bottle. Before before Jeremiah set off for his trip, his mother gave him a small bottle of holy water. So he rolled up the message, put his note inside, and tossed it out to the sea. The note read, from the Titanic, goodbye all, Burke of Glanmire Cork. Sadly, Burke and his cousin perished in the sinking. But a year later, the message he sent out was found just a few miles from his home. It's crazy how it managed to get that close to his home. It seems like it was destined to reach his family, and it did. Filling out number seven saw are the lovers. Christmas Day, 1945. World War II had just barely ended, and 21-year-old soldier Frank Hayostek was on his way home to begin anew. While on his transport ship, he thought to write a little letter and put it in a bottle and throw it overboard just to see what would come of it, if anything at all. Eight months later, the bottle washed up in Ireland and was found by a 19 year old milkmaid called Breda O'Sullivan. Breda's like, ooh, a soldier, he's gonna be jacked and hot, let me reply to man's DM. She wrote back and thus started their seven year long distance relationship. That's a long damn time. Well, seven years later, Frank finally decided to go visit her in Ireland and meet her for the first time. But really, it took him seven years to do so? <laughs> like, boys are so slow when it comes to these things. Like, come on, man. How did it take him that long to realize, like, you know what, actually, I do kind of like her. Now, he didn't make a lot of money, but he did manage to save enough to fly to Ireland. So cute. But by that point, the international press had heard about the star-crossed lovers and ambushed the couple as Frank arrived at the airport. He stayed there for a full two weeks and then left. No one knows what happened except the fact that the romance ended after the two weeks. Maybe it wasn't meant to be, or maybe Frank wasn't a jacked hot man like she thought. 
I can't believe it. <laughs> Catfished for seven years. Now, at number six is the little kid. Back in 2016, a demolition crew in New Mexico found a time capsule dating all the way back to 1968. Inside the time capsule, they found a big bottle that had a bunch of letters inside that children had written. Now, judging by the contents of the letters, it kind of seemed like it was a fun school exercise or something. It was things like, my favorite drink is this, I like pizza, etc. But one letter was freaking weird and it was written by Greg Lee Youngman. There's always that one one creepy kid in every class isn't there like dude relax the letter said I am dead I go to Montgomery school this is the olden school name I was born in 1900 you ought to know I dead my favorite subject is spooking the police I play the guitar in case you don't know what it is it is a board with strings on them I am 10 years old see you later savages <laughs> No, what kind of 10 year old kid writes these things? Like, you have to be quite messed up to be like, I am dead. See you later, savages. But the end did make me chuckle. That's a bit of a mic drop moment. Good on you. I do like it. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the dollar bill. This story was posted on a website that is dedicated to cracking messages found in bottles. So on October of 2011, a user posted a picture of a weird bottle they found at a beach. Inside the bottle was a rolled up dollar bill that had strange markings all over it. The markings are a mixture of scribbles and weird symbols. On one hand, some people believe that it's a coded message, whereas on the other hand, and people believe that it's a treasure map. I'm thinking that if you fold it like origami style, then it will reveal a coded message. But for now, the mystery remains. Who sent out that message and what does it mean? Moving on to number four, we have the SOS. Do you know that Jonas Brothers song? S -O this is no. an SOS. I was, I was thinking of the um, SOS, please. Someone help me. A couple years ago, a man named Paul Southworth was cleaning out debris from a pond when he discovered a bottle containing a secret message. The message was very faded from sun exposure and soaked with lake water, but you could clearly see the words SOS written on it. On one side of the note, it was written in German, and on the other side, it was written in English. It was presumed that they both say the same thing. Now the note read as follows, please help us, we're in this place for a stupid disguise that has happened one year ago. We are two guys from Italy and Germany and we are now on an island in France near Breton coast. Our parents know where is this place so if you just write to one of them, better to advise both of them, we could be saved in no time. The note then stated two addresses, but I don't think Paul did anything with this note, he just shared it online. So there literally could be people out there just stranded in need of his help. Paul, you literally had one bloody job. But also kudos to the two guys that wrote it in German and translated it to English, but I'm also confused, what do they mean they went as disguise? Like, I don't know. did they go as spies and now they want to go back to their old lives? Like, what do you mean? That rhymed. Filling at number three saw is the love match. I think this one is incredibly cute and almost like an old version of all these dating apps. So in 1956, a Swedish sailor called Oke Viking was lovesick, lonely, and desperate. As we all are at times, it happens to the best of us. Now he decided to throw caution to the wind and write a quick message to someone beautiful and far away, before corking it in a bottle and throwing it away. His love letter was found two years later by Paulina, a woman from Sicily. She replied saying, I am not beautiful, but it seems so miraculous that this little bottle should have traveled so far and long to reach me that I I must send you an answer. Modest, I like it. She probably was cute, let's be real. Now the two ended up in a long distance relationship before Viking moved to Sicily to marry Paulina. Hello, this is better than Romeo and Juliet RT if you cry every time. Only if, if only love was that easy. What happened to that other couple? They lasted seven years only to break up in two weeks after meeting each other. Lol. Moving on to number two, we have the Lusitania. A couple years after the Titanic sank, the ocean liner, the Lusitania, followed in its lead. Kind of. This ship was hit by a German torpedo in May of 1915 while on its way from New York to Liverpool. It took just 18 minutes for the ship to sink. During those 18 minutes, one passenger was able to write a note which he placed in a bottle. Many years later, it was found. The note read, still on deck with a few people. The last boats have left. We are sinking fast. 
Some men near me are praying with a priest. The end is near. And then it just cuts off like that. Why did he seal it up without finishing his thoughts? Did he run out of time? Did something else happen? I need answers. This is a big mystery. And finally, animal one is the hex in a bottle. This story was shared by Reddit user Mariah KL13 back in 2014. Now, one day the user went to the beach with some friends and she found a bottle. Dude, I've gone to the beach so many times in my life, I have never found a glass bottle. I found a bunch of empty plastic bottles just littered around, but not a glass bottle with a message for me. And the bottle contained pink water and a letter tied with a black ribbon. Why and how was the water pink, first of all? We don't know. But here's the thing, when they drained the weird pink liquid, they discovered a photo of a woman wearing pink. I'm thinking that like water got in and then oh, so her she... pink dye from the photo like Oh bleached. true, 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 true. Okay, Solved it. It seems pretty innocent, right? No, the photo was pierced several times with pins. It's believed that this was an attempt to put a curse on the woman in the photo. Kind of like a voodoo doll, but with a photo instead of the doll. But Damn, that sucks. I hope this woman wasn't found drowned with tons of like puncture wounds all over her body. Also, what did she do to make someone want to put a hex on her? <laughs> Seriously, it's not a typical thing that people do. <laughs> and was it necessary to like put it in a bottle and throw it away? Was it part of the hex or was they that just like added? They were drown her, so they're like, Oh, true. Out. <laughs> in you go. Starting off at number 10 is Father's Day Distress. Curtis Whitson, his 13 year old son and his girlfriend Crystal Ramirez went backpacking at the Arroyo Sec River in California for Father's Day weekend back in 2019. Though Whitson was familiar with the Central California Coast Forest and takes as many as 20 backpacking trips there every year, he didn't expect to find himself trapped between 40 foot rocks and a strong water current. This sounds a lot like 127 hours, but just kind of worse somehow. Whitson and his crew planned to float down the river to their campground, but the currents made the river impassable, and the rope that was in place to help hikers out of that kind of situation was was just gone. Once they realized they were stuck, the group used the paper they had on hand to write a message that read, we are stuck here at the waterfall, get help please, and of course the date, June 15th, 2019. They placed the message in a green water bottle, scratched help into the side and tossed it over the waterfall. Two unidentified hikers found the message and the California Highway Patrol rescued the three stranded hikers the following day. I guess the only thing mysterious about this one is the fact that Whitson and Ramirez are still looking to identify the hackers who found their message just to thank them for saving their lives. Just imagine in some weird plot twist it was like a ghost that found the bottle. Strange. Coming in at number 9 is Paula. So back in 2018, an Australian woman discovered the oldest known message in a bottle on some sand dunes in Australia. Tanya Illman discovered a bottle while walking along the beach and picked it up thinking it would be an attractive decoration to place on her bookshelf. To her surprise, her son's girlfriend noticed a rolled up piece of paper secured with a small piece of string inside the bottle. After letting the bottle and note dry out, Ilman and her family unrolled the note to find handwriting in German that included information about the location and route of a ship called the Paula. Now at first, Ilman obviously assumed the whole message was a hoax. However, Ilman's husband did some research online and the date from the note corresponded with a program conducted in Germany from 1864 to 1963. Captains would routine throw bottles in the sea and write down the name of the ship, the date, the precise coordinates and the travel route. Given the message included this information, the family took the bottle to a maritime museum where a curator determined the message was authentic and had indeed been released as part of the program. The message was roughly 132 years old. This makes it the oldest known message in a bottle surpassing the previous record of 108 years. And number 8 we have Better Late Than Never. This one's a World War 1 story involving a message in a bottle from a young British soldier named Private Thomas Hughes. It was 1914, it was the first year in the war and Hughes was lonely aboard a transport ship. He wrote a letter to his wife but with no way to mail it to her, he decided to take a chance and stuff the letter into a ginger ale bottle, seal it and cast it into the English Channel. Private Hughes died two days later on a French battlefield and his wife never received his letter. But that was not the end of the story. Decades later in 1990, 
1999, the bottle was found bobbing around the Thames by a local fisherman. He and some others tried to find Hugh's wife, but it turned out she had passed away 20 years prior. Bit down on your luck there, aren't you, Private Hughes? However, a little more digging produced some good news. It was discovered that Hughes had a daughter who was then an elderly 86 year old living in New Zealand. She was only one year old when she lost her father, but she lived to receive the letter he wrote to her mother all those years ago. His message read, Dear wife, I'm writing this note on this boat and dropping it into the sea just to see if it will reach you. If it does, sign this envelope on the right hand bottom corner where it says receipt. Put the date and hour of receipt and your name where it says signature and look after it well. Tata sweet, for the present, your hubby. How cute! I die if someone ever did that for me! God, it's 2020 and the standards are low, people. <laughs> Filling our number 7 slot is Jonathan and Mary. 23 year old kite surfer Matea Medic Rezik stumbled across a half broken bottle while clearing debris from a Croatian beach at the mouth of the Noretva River in the southern Adriatic. Noretva. These words are hard, you guys. Why do I always get stuck with like the Eastern European words? Like. <laughs> I'm not Eastern European, but I can do a very good Russian accent. <laughs> now inside the bottle was a message from Jonathan honoring his promise to write to a woman named Mary. And I can't even get a text back. And here is Jonathan just writing a letter to Mary. Whatever. Now the message was written 28 years beforehand and originated in Nova Scotia, Canada. The message read, Mary, you really are a great person. I hope we can keep in correspondence. I said I would write, your friend always, Jonathan, Nova Scotia, 1985. The bottle would have had to have traveled approximately 6,000 kilometers across the Atlantic Ocean, entered into the Mediterranean Sea, and then drifted into the Adriatic Sea. It's not known where Mary's from or how she even knew Jonathan, and the real mystery here is why someone would send a message in a bottle in the 80s. Like telephones and snail mail totally existed back then. Come on, Jonathan. Clearly, you didn't want to reach Mary that bad. Now, anime six is Queen Elizabeth the first. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen me host enough historical videos to know that Queen Liz ruled England during the mid to late 16th century. Her long reign was considered the golden age, but it was also known as an age of danger, intrigue, and piracy. Queen Elizabeth the first actually encouraged privacy, which was then known as privateering, and even referred to her favorite pirates as sea dogs. It was not uncommon for pirates and other nefarious types to attempt to transmit messages via floating bottle. The Queen considered such messages so important that she created the office of the Royal Uncorker of Ocean Bottles. Like how the hell is that a real job? The holder of this position was the only person authorized to open discovered floating bottles and anyone else caught attempting to uncork an ocean bottle would be arrested and charged with capital crime. I guess my question is, what was written in these messages that would warrant someone to be arrested and charged if they read them? Coming in at number 5 is a mother's love, and for those watching who have mommy issues, I apologize. Sometimes due to death or distance, a person is unable to send a message to a loved one in the conventional way. That was the case for a French mother crossing the English Channel on a ferry back in 2002. She had lost her son Maurice when he was only 13 years old, and so in her grief, she sent a teardrop shaped bottle, some items of children's clothing and lilies into the sea. The bottle contained the following heartbreaking message, forgive me for being so angry at your disappearance. I still think there's some mistake and I keep waiting for God to fix it. Forgive me for not having known how to protect you from death. Forgive me for not having been able to find the words at that terrible moment when you slipped through my fingers. The bottle drifted away from the ferry boat and out of sight and out of mind. However, it was found a few weeks later when two people named Sue Pito and Karen Lebreich found it on a beach in Kent, England. Captivated, the two women had the letter translated and searched for the letter's author for several years, actually resulting in the publication of Karen's book The Letter in the Bottle, detailing obviously the discovery and search. A few years later, the mother, who remains unnamed, contacted Karen and the two women finally met in France, so I guess it is a happily ever after. At number 4 is 23 years later. The year was 1990 and Zoe Avrianov was 10 years old when she threw her message in a bottle overboard while she was on holiday, travelling by ferry from Hull, England to Belgium. Her message read, Dear Finder, my name is Zoe Lemon. Please would you write to me? I would
would like it a lot. I'm 10 years old and I like ballet, playing the flute and the piano. I have a hamster called Sparkle and fish called Speckle. 23 years later, during Christmas of 2013, a letter arrived at Zoe's parents' address from a Dutch couple. It read, Dear Zoe, yesterday on one of my many walks with my wife along the dikes of Oosterskelde, looking among the debris thrown by the sea of embankment, I found a little plastic bottle containing your message. How cute, 10 year old little Zoe. Filling out number three slot is a grandson's connection. Jeff Flood was taking a walk with his partner on 90 Mile Beach in New Zealand one Sunday back in 2012 when he noticed a bottle floating near the beach. Inside the bottle, he found a handwritten note dated March 17th, 1936, and it read, At sea, would the finder of this bottle kindly forward this note to where it found date to undimensioned address? Underneath the note was the name H. E. Hillbrick, 72 Richmond Street, Leaderville, Western Australia. This note was written on special stationery marked with a picture of the ship that the note is thought to have come from. The SS Strathnaber, a British Royal Mail ship that carried people between England and Australia. Flood discovered that H. E. Hillbrick had died in the early 1940s, but he was led to Hillbrick's grandson, Peter Hillbrick, who was living in Perth. Peter told local media of the discovery, saying, The only connection I have with my grandfather is now this bottle. That's about all, so it's a fascinating story. That it is, Peter, that it is. Now at number two is The Record, a drift bottle released out to sea on June 10th, 1914 by Captain C. Hunter Brown, was recovered by UK fisherman Andrew Leeper almost 98 years later on April 12th, 2012. Brown was a scientist at the Glasgow School of Navigation studying the currents of a North Sea, and the bottle was one of 1,890 released on that fateful day back in 1914. The Glasgow School cast more than 1,889 bottles into the sea, and each of the bottles contained a printed card with instructions describing on how to report the bottle back to the navigation school. It's the former Guinness World Record holder for all this message in a bottle, and the message inside reads as follows. Please state where and when this card was found, and then put it in the nearest post office. You will be informed in reply where and when it was set adrift. Our object is to find out the direction of the deep currents of the North Sea. The bottle was discovered 9.38 nautical miles from the position it was originally deployed. That's kind of a fun project. I'd want to find a bottle and just send it back just to see when it was sent out as well. And finally, animal one is our new world record, question mark? A message in a bottle tossed in the sea in Germany 101 years ago, believed to be the world's oldest, was presented to the sender's granddaughter. A fisherman pulled the beer bottle with the scribbled message out of the Baltic Sea off the northern city of Kiel in March, according to Holger van Neuhoff of the International Maritime Museum. Von Neuhoff said researchers were able to determine based on the address that it was 20 year old baker's son Richard Platz who threw the bottle in the Baltic Sea while on a hike with a nature appreciation group back in 1913. Although this hasn't been recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records, it definitely surpasses the previous story from number two with 101 years at sea. Coming in at number 10, we have the Cabbage Patch Kid doll. I actually had a Cabbage Patch Kid and I think, do you know what, I could have earned some mega bucks. While regular Cabbage Patch Kids do come and go from auction sites all the time, a super rare 1984 Cabbage Patch Kid doll still in its original box sold for $1,000 plus $56 postage in 2017. The item description reads, all in block caps by the way, I was informed that this was the hardest and most desirable Cabbage Patch Kids doll back in 1984, the rarest of the rare. This is a piece of history here, baby boy Anthony with pacifier. You really have to love some unsolicited block capitals in your life, like bleh. So yeah, if you have any of those babies lying around, you are sitting on a little gold mine. Coming into number nine, we have rare first edition Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Ooh, Pokemon cards are a definite thing of my youth. I even put one in a millennium time capsule me and my sister buried in my garden. The trading card game had an initial release in 1996, and in 2015, a rare mint condition Pokemon card cropped up on eBay. The listing description simply read, Rare Pikachu first movie promo card. Good. Obviously the buyer knew what they were looking for, that description was enough for them. It sold for £1,500, so that's over $2,000. That's more than just spare change. Coming into number 8, we have Beanie Babies. Wait what, so all those years you spent protecting the TY tag of your Beanie Baby was actually worth it? Get out. 
Too bad you tossed them all out in a yard sale in 2009, right? Fun fact for you Americans, we call yard sales in the UK car boot sales. Car boot, it's true. So it turns out that, yeah, some of them were actually worth something. The limited edition billionaire bear goes for around $3,500, but the creme de la creme beanie is peanut the royal blue elephant, of which 2,000 exist. Now these go for between $1,500 to $5,000. Oh my goodness. Coming into number seven, we have Sylvanian families. Sylvanian families were created in 1985 in Japan and distributed worldwide. They became hugely popular in the late 80s and early 90s. I loved a good Sylvanian family tea party with my mates. These days, the animal toy families are earning a few hoarders some mega bucks. Just a teeny tiny Sylvanian family's Japanese doll of the year sold for £500, so $700, and that's just for one figure. Loads of regular vintage Sylvanian families are going for hundreds in casual eBay sales. Amazing. Coming into number six, we have Star Wars Lego. So, if you have some Star Wars Lego in your cupboard, get it out immediately. Regular Star Wars Lego sells like really expensive hotcakes on eBay these days. My ex boyfriend actually partially funded his move to Canada by selling his Phantom Menace era Lego. The dream is an original Millennium Falcon, and those honeys can fetch thousands of dollars. According to the website Catawiki, the highest price fetch for an old 5,174 piece Millennium. Falcon was $5,500. Whoa. Coming into number five, we have the G.I. Joe motorized battle tank. G.I. Doe, more like. Oh my goodness. This rare G.I. Joe battle tank from the 1980s was listed on eBay for a whopping $6,500. G.I. Joe debuted in the 60s, but for collectors, it seems to be all about the 1982 new product launch. One of these tankalicious beauties in its original box could bank you some mega bucks. Okay, so less toy, more more of a receptacle to keep your lunch in, but to most kids, anything can be a toy, especially something with robots on. Yeah, boy. Check out this absolute gold mine of a Superman versus the robot lunchbox at number four. One of these honeys sold for an insane $11,865. The 1954 pristine condition vintage lunchbox caught one buyer's eye at a Philip Weiss auction in 2010. Apparently, the vintage comic tin is the holy grail of lunchboxes. There's a genre I never knew existed. Coming into number three, we have the Black Lotus Magic the Gathering card. So Magic the Gathering, for those that don't know, is a game that was first published in 1993. These days, there are around 20 million players worldwide. Cool. By and large, the super rare Black Lotus card is the most valuable, fetching around $5,000 on average. However, one lucky player discovered the holiest of grails when they opened an old alpha starter pack. This is one of the first ever decks for Magic. In the deck, he found the Magic Lotus, and he then sold it on eBay for, brace yourself, $27,302. Good God. Coming into number two, we have Polly Pockets. So small, but so big. Polly Pockets became a thing in 1989, like all of the best things, really, <clears throat> including me. Polly Pockets were a total staple for 90s kids. I had a few myself, and they were teeny weeny and very, very cute. Small as they might be, they have a mighty selling power. This year, a Polly Pocket set went for £7,795 on eBay, so that's around $11,000. Who would have thought it just for like something this big? Would you rather have a car or a Polly Pocket? Pocket. I know which I'd choose. If only I had some Polly Pockets to sell. While that particular sale is pretty extreme, Polly and chums are regularly fetching price tags of thousands of dollars online. Finally, this is crazy money. At number one, we have the Nintendo World Championship 1990 Gold Cartridge. Hold on to your hats. In 2014, a 1990 World Championship Gold Cartridge sold on eBay for $100,088. I'm sorry, but like, what? That is actually like a pretty life changing sum of money. A thousand dollars could and would change my life right now. The listing said that the cartridge was pre owned in an acceptable condition with a torn label. It seems that just 26 gold carts were made and were released in a Nintendo Power magazine giveaway in the 90s, and that's why they're so rare and so expensive. Mm -hmm.